In early August 2017, two prominent members of Venezuela's political opposition were arrested and thrown in jail, with no clear charges or explanation. The previous day, the country's president, Nicolas Maduro, threatened to send his own attorney general to a mental institution after she criticized his plans to consolidate power. For months, Venezuela has seen widespread massive protests against Maduro's increasingly authoritarian tactics and legislative upheaval, which many have compared to a coup d'etat. So is Venezuela turning into a dictatorship? Well, for the past two decades, the country has relied on its enormous oil reserves to fund excessively wasteful socialist policies under former president Hugo Chavez. When Chavez died in 2013, his protege, Nicolas Maduro, continued these policies, which budgeted nothing for the future. Although this worked under Chavez, the following year, oil prices collapsed, and the Venezuelan government effectively abandoned its citizens. Protests began as crime, inflation, and food shortages skyrocketed. In response, Venezuelans voted to give control of the National Assembly Parliament to the anti-Chavez Maduro party, called the Democratic Unity Roundtable. A referendum to recall the president was slated for late 2016, with many expecting his removal. But just days before the vote, Maduro's Supreme Court canceled the referendum, and within months, the court dissolved the country's parliament, which at that point was the only opposition group with power in government. Although the move was soon after reversed due to international and domestic outcry, this power grab sparked the largest protests Venezuela had ever seen. In what was called the mother of all marches, as many as 6 million people took to the streets in early 2017, protesting Maduro and his Chavist government. <laughs> Hundreds of people were arrested and three people were killed. But the president's gutting of democracy didn't end there. His Supreme Court began overturning laws passed by the National Assembly designed to restrict executive power. With only 20% support countrywide, Maduro's actions have opened the door to a full-blown dictatorship. On July 30th, 2017, the president held a national vote to create a constitutional assembly, giving a single group unlimited authority to rewrite the constitution and rule unilaterally over Venezuela. Voters were not given an option to reject such a singularly powerful faction, and their choices were limited to choosing from a list of Maduro loyalists, including his own wife. Opposition members boycotted this transparent power grab and called the results predetermined. In spite of an overwhelming majority of Venezuelans rejecting the Constitutional Assembly by some opposition estimates as high as 98%, the Maduro loyalist group currently holds absolute power in government without any checks or balances. Maduro and his party have been accused of abandoning democracy altogether in a country that seems just moments from a full-blown anti-government revolution, as seen in other countries like Syria and Libya. Whether the president will be able to remain in control or if his actions will spark an outright civil war still remains to be seen. Venezuela has undergone one of the worst economic slumps in the world, but it isn't the only country to be described as a miserable economy. To learn more about what exactly that term means and which other countries fit the bill, you can check out this video. Thanks for watching Now This World. Let us know down below in the comments what kinds of topics you'd like to see covered, and don't forget to like and subscribe to see more videos every week.